Welcome Lawheads to another 40k video as we look through the Akashic Reader at the timeless depths of the warp where all stories are already written. Now witness 40k what if where we examine what would happen if the tides of fate were different things had gone another way. Here we focus on the idea of secrets. For the pilot episode and secrets I can think of no better start than the Dark Angels and their secret, the Fallen. For those that don't know, the Fallen are traitors who betrayed their Primarch the Lion by siding with his close friend and ally Luther, who had been crooked by Chaos. They have taken efforts to create an information network set up across the galaxy to keep them informed if a Fallen is spotted. What makes this most interesting is the return of the Lion to the setting and what he has kept secret even to his own sons. He is brought into the ranks of the Dark Angels, some of the Fallen, that he has dubbed the Risen. Angels who fell with Luther, but who have remained true to the angels in spirit and deed, and are not corrupted by chaos. They fight with the Lion, acting as his bodyguards, but do not reveal their faces, their identities, secret perhaps even from each other. Those who have hunted the Fallen do not know amongst their own ranks are those they would consider traitors. So that's the scenario we walk into. You can see the potential threat to the unity of the chapter if the information got out. For the inciting person, I can think of no better character than Cypher. Now my read on Cypher is he works for himself, but his ultimate allegiance is to the Dark Angel's best interests as he sees them, kind of like serving a kingdom, but not its rulers. After all, chaos is a ladder. So through his actions, Azrael and the Inner Council learn about the Risen. I think they would want to speak to their father to understand and round up also those amongst their own ranks that they consider now traitors. I think to these sons, the Lion would explain his thoughts. Though there might be a little tussle, a little tension between the groups, a brief fight between the loyal forces, the angels can sense the Lion is their father. They never Upon seeing him deny that, even in the Acts of Omen the Lion. I don't think they would question that, or that he had been turned by chaos. It would be a matter of the why, why the Risen. And all the Dark Angels are wrapped up in their own secrets, understanding the need for it. I think at this level, it could be contained, and the same into the upper ranks of the Dark Angels who know about the Fallen. Especially if the Inner Council's force of will is behind it, and of course the Lion himself. What about other factions? What if it came to the ears of the Inquisition, or Gilliman for say? For his brother, and let's assume that they've not talked at this point, I think in terms of the secret, the Blue Boys Primarch, who for example has made some interesting choices himself. He got the Grey Knights and an Eldari to help him interrogate a demon for information on his traitor brother Matarian, for example. I think he would understand the need for his secrets, I also think of Belisarius Call, the AI that he's made, that he tells Gilliman is not an AI. He's got a lot of secrets himself, does Rebute. So I think he'd understand how certain choices can shatter the Imperium further. For the Fallen, I think Gilliman would try to speak to his brother via Astropath, perhaps wiping the path's mind or killing them after. I feel the Lion would put him on hold, sit on the throne and inwardly silently laugh for a while, Ask the signal be dropped, so Booty has to call back. The line is not available right now. No messages can be recorded by Astropathy. But Booty will get through to the line, and he'll listen to his brother. The line could perhaps reference Imperial Secundus as a moment when you can only act on what you know at the time. And the line understands his son's nature as it is his own. Imperial Secundus, in brief, for those who don't know, was when Booty set up an empire not knowing at the time if the Master of Mankind was still alive or not, and also he was cut off from communication across the large Imperium by warp storms. Sanguinius even reluctantly took the throne in the place of the Big E, and the Lion agreed to it for a while. The Lion would talk about how his sons have hunted the Fallen in his absence, and Rebutia would understand this from reports where the angels had been on a mission and then suddenly got away. It's like have some sort of other agenda. I don't think that would go beyond the notice of Rebute. 
Perhaps the line would explain some of the fallen caught up in Luther's absence remained true, and Robuti would accept his brother's word at this. And another sub-context here, it's rumoured that Robuti has some of the members of the Lost Primax legions brought into his own legion. And this would be another way you can see a parallel between the action and what's happening here. As for the larger mechanism of the Imperium, we won't go through everything, but I think the Blood Angels would accept it as a chapter that has their own secrets, such as the Blood Thirst. And one I think would try to hunt angels initially would be the Space Wolves. But Bjorn, knowing the mistake of Prospero, counsels against it. He knew Russ and I think would have known of Russ's regret for what happened, where the wolves wrecked Prospero, homeworld of the Thousand Sons. Others may want to move against angels, but they're not likely to be able to find the rock or disobey an edict from Rabute on the subject. So they also accept his word to let the angels deal with their own business, chapter business, and that the angels under the line are loyal. Which brings us to the Grey Knights. I think they and some of the Order Malleus would act. And let's say using some Dark Age tech they've got stashed in a drawer somewhere, they go to the rock. And as Ming's Law states, outside his own kingdom, the hunter becomes the hunted. The angels are more prepared than ever for an attack after Vashtar invaded the rock during the Acts of Omen. The knights and the Inquisition are quickly found and confronted by the angels. There is a little fighting with the lion killing a number of more experienced grey knights perhaps, even facing the Grand Master, just because I'd love to see that. And then he talks to them, as he's more mature now, after his long nap. It must have been a restful one. He would speak of secrets, how he's the first son of the Emperor, how the Grey Knights are sons too, in their own way, and how the Emperor trusted the Lion with much secret knowledge. The Lion would think of the weapons, such as the Men of Iron, the first and last Lord of the Imperium entrusted to him, but would not mention this. And then he would say that the Grey Knights can leave with their lives. The Imperium needs every soldier it can in these dark times. But he wants them to know, should they ever again set foot on the rock, or hound his true sons, then he will hunt them back to their home den of Titan. And here he gives a little detail about Titan, quoting various places he should not know about, secret places, and finishes, there is nowhere I can't hunt you. And after the agents of the Dark Angels out in the wider Imperium find the fallen quicker, and the hunt continues. Someone found or accepted as redeemed, the lion being the judge. And this is done more openly within the upper ranks of the Dark Angels. The Grey Knights and Inquisition keep a cautious but distant eye on the Dark Angels. And that's where we wrap up today's video. I think the younger lion's actions will be rasher. Probably a couple more Grey Knight heads about to roll. I tried to give him the maturity scene in Lion's Son of the Forest, which I recently f finished reading for this purpose. And also not plunge the Imperium into a civil war that would mean they would lose every other war. Two things I've tried to keep this within world. I don't think GW would ever have a full civil war and repeat the heresy, it would be on a smaller scale. The Imperium is on a knife's edge, as it is. And the lying known the secrets of the Grey Knights was not something from canon, but was a cool way for him to threaten them. The Man of Secrets, we could say, learned about what happened on Titan during the scouring or after their activity during the current setting. And I've also tried to ground the decisions made by the Lion and Gilliman in actions they've taken from the past to match their characters. I want to do more of these, so let me know what you think and how you think things might have played out. Would it be a war on a smaller or larger scale, maybe? Comment down below and let me know.